So we're back to review another episode of Fear the Walking Dead. This is for season 7, episode 2. This episode is called Six Hours. This time we're around, we are following Morgan and Grace. And if you don't want to get anything spoiled for you about this episode, do not watch this review. You've been warned. So as I said, this episode is following Morgan and Grace. My expectations going into season 7 was that this was actually going to be episode 1. I was quite surprised that episode 1 was actually following Strand's group instead of Morgan. I just assumed it was fireworks, it's Halloween time, they are wrecking my head. But I went into this season just expecting episode 1 to be following Morgan. Not only is it because he's our main character, but the first episode of season 4 when he first got introduced was following Morgan. Same with season 5, following Morgan. Season 6, which I thought was a fantastic episode of the premiere of season 6, was following Morgan. So my expectations going into season 7 was following Morgan. But following Morgan in episode 2 of Fear the Walking Dead, season 7 was honestly a really, really good episode. And the reason this episode was as good as it was, not only were we following Morgan and Grace, whose relationship has honestly is they both still care for each other deeply, but you can see they're both so damaged. Grace in particular, you can tell they're both so damaged and they both don't know what to do with their life. As you saw at the end of season six, their initial plan was when the nukes went off, they were going to kill themselves. They were literally about to kill themselves and then they heard the baby crying outside to Morgan, put down the gun, they went out, they saved the baby's life. But their initial plan was to end their lives there. And you could tell ever since Grace lost the baby in season six, she's not been all there grace hasn't fully been with the group even if you watch her at the end of season six when she was there she was kind of there out of obligation she felt like she had to be there to save the day but you could tell she literally just did not want to be there anymore and this episode just puts that point even further down your throat really letting you know that grace does not want to be there you can tell grace doesn't want to live anymore and it's hard to argue her point it's they're in a world where there's not much hope anyways and there's not much reason for living anymore and grace has gone through something that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy in fact that she lost her child at birth why would you want anyone to suffer through that now she's struggling to survive in a world that it's hard for rick and the group to survive in the world they're in but morgan and the group is even harder because they have to wear nuclear masks all the time the world has quite literally been burnt and it's horrible and very hard for them to live in so you if it was hard enough for her to survive before that happened it's it's amazing that she's still going honestly it truly is but you see them living inside the submarine which made sense i think i and almost everyone was expecting them to be living inside the submarine it was cool you see them actually wearing the clothes that would have been supplied throughout the submarine but grace goes out she's looking for supplies because the baby's hungry they've only got solids there so they're going out looking for supplies not really knowing if they can but they have a, a six hour window i think i remember well six hours name of the episode they got a six hour window that they can't be out there for any longer than six hours so grace goes out there looking for supplies she finds a can of baby formula the radiation level is really really low she's getting ready to take it and then these two people come in so she immediately pulls the shelf down on top of her and she's hiding there in a quite I wouldn't say intense scene, but a scene where I was sitting there really hoping nothing was going to happen to Grace. Grace got first introduced, I wasn't really a fan of her, but as her relationship has grown with Morgan, after what she went through in season 6, I'm getting very fond of her character, and actually I'm really growing to like her character. So I was quite worried in that moment that she was going to get caught. I would have been quite surprised that if she got caught, she would die, but I was glad to see she did not get caught in that moment. But the people did steal the baby formula, so now she's going back empty handed but you can see when she goes back morgan saying i'll go out you've been gone out for six hours i'll go out for six hours now she is so so reluctant to stay with that baby as the baby's crying she's screaming at the baby not at the baby for crying she's just screaming because she mentally cannot handle being in the situation with a baby like that honestly how can you blame her she knows that the best way to calm the baby down is music, but she doesn't want to play music because music was her way of communicating with her child before the child was born. So how can you blame her again for not wanting to sing to the child? But as she's gone out there, the baby falls asleep because she just put music on to get the baby to shut up. She falls asleep and then Morgan comes in. He says he wasn't really looking for food. He had a plan. We go out and we see that Morgan has made a car. 
the car was very reminiscent of Mad Max. This whole episode and kind of in general was very reminiscent of Mad Max. Not only because of the car but the destroyed world. The uh, crazy people. Just so many similarities to Mad Max. I ended up re-watching the entire franchise this year. So just seeing that again and re-watching the franchise just really, really reminded me of Mad Max. And I enjoyed it for that kind of moment. But they are, their plan is to go to a certain location they're going to drive as far as they can to get there they stripped a lot of the petrol from the submarine so their plan is to to just drive they're going to see if they can get out of there but as they're going there morgan puts the music on because he said it's a road trip you gotta have music after all for a road trip so they're driving i don't know how long i think it was about three hours they're driving for and then it got to the point in the in the tape where Grace is talking to her child because we knew, well Grace knew she thought she was going to be the one to die and her child was going to be the one to survive. So she gives a message to her child and Grace, you can see, is starting to lose it. She is smacking the radio, begging Morgan, saying, please stop it, please stop it, please, just whatever you do, stop it. And in the process, the car crashes. They lose a tyre, but someone was on the road that kind of made them go off. My immediate reaction was, it was the people that, they actually uh, grace met in the supermarket and we do get to spend a lot of time with those people in the um supermarket but before that grace says to morgan says to grace i saw an auto shop play, repair shop back a few blocks i'm gonna go back there get tired grace says she'll do it and she says that just leave her there this is grace's first sign that she doesn't want to keep living she says to morgan you and the baby go if you go the car will be lighter which means the car will be faster so just go you don't need me here i don't want to be here anymore i'm a burden she just really says to morgan she doesn't want to live but as this conversation is going on these people come up i can't remember the woman's name but i'm pretty sure the man's name was fred and these people are you could tell they're they've lost it they're crazy they're wearing these masks reminding me straight away of a quiet place 2 when you look at um what's the actor's name Killian Murphy the way he had the mask over his face he reminded me straight away of them but you're looking at them and you're looking at them going is this meant to be their radiation mask it's just a piece of cloth and you're constantly looking at them because they're never taking the masks down but their first immediate reaction was Morgan and Grace say stay away from the kid and they're going oh this is our daughter this is our daughter you stole our daughter and you're looking at it going okay well first off we know it's not the daughter Morgan was there when she was born we saw the mother bring the daughter straight away to Morgan and Grace. So why are these two people so adamant that this is their daughter? It's going on. It's pretty, they're pretty unsettling, pretty creepy throughout the episode. And it's just really making you sit there wondering what the hell are they going to do to Morgan and Grace? We later find out in this episode that uh, not only is the couple wearing the masks for a very particular reason. And it's because where Morgan and Grace were going is a place they really shouldn't be going. Not because there's bad people or anything, but that's where the nuclear bombs hit. That was a like ground zero, so their faces are destroyed. The woman's nose is it's gone. Her face is all scarred up. Fred isn't looking too bad, but the woman in particular looks really, really bad. You can see even Grace's, uh, I don't know what it's called, but its readings are off the chart with radiation coming from these two. And even they warn Morgan saying, those type of walkers, you should stay away from. Because like, look, this is our second type of walker that's getting introduced in Fear to Walk and that's different. First off, we had in season five, the radiation ones, the one that had the necklace on, you should stay away from. But uh, this one was saying, they are radiation walkers too, like, like a ridiculous number you kill them if like like if you just touch them their body parts falling off like you could shove their arm and their arm just falls off and she says you don't want their body parts to fall off so that really is something i would like to see moving forward but i don't really know when we're going to see them but we also see uh the morgan they take the car to the auto shop repair they're fixing the car the two couple who again i can't remember the woman's name but fred they are packing their stuff into the car they are planning on leaving there with the baby because they do believe that that's their child as the whole thing is going down the woman's in the car morgan takes the gun off fred he's getting ready to shoot the woman and then grace knocks the gun in the air she's not says no we can't you'll damage the car so then they drive off down the road morgan saying I can't lose another child and Grace says something like uh, you're not the only one who lost a, a child which is something I actually completely forgot. I knew Grace lost a child because it's been a very 
important storyline. But I completely forgot Morgan lost a child. Like I knew, I know Dwayne's gone. For me, I still kind of think he's alive out there just because Morgan was in such a crazy state. You can't fully believe that he's gone. In the comic books, we actually saw Dwayne's walker body. But we didn't see it in the series. That's why I kind of think Dwayne is still alive out there somewhere. But uh, he says that to Grace. And I was like wow okay. That really kind of made us. Because even it's been hinted at in Fear the Walking Dead. That Morgan has always said his wife is dead. But he's always been. The way he's been saying Dwayne. It always made him sound like in the present tense. That he's still alive out there somewhere. But um, Morgan does end up stopping the car. And ends up fighting the woman. Ends up They actually all end up teaming up together. In a point where Fred and Grace take the baby inside. And some mysterious figure comes up my best guess is it's a crm soldier just the way the you kind of see the outline of him looks like an armor and he's got a weapon that's very reminiscent of the weapons they have in the world beyond so my best guess is this is a crm soldier but they get in the car morgan ends up shooting down the crm soldier he ends up killing it as far as i could tell and as they're in the car they hear some weird noise inside the suitcase and it's led to believe isn't it's morgan says it but at this point we're all like is there a kid in the bag my first thought was their kid was fine but since he was younger the radiation is what changed him you can see them they're slowly dying their bodies are slowly decaying her nose literally fell off but i thought since the child was younger it probably happened faster it's probably some kind of weird i don't even know not a walker but i thought some weird creature but then she says no it's Fred didn't like the crying. Fred couldn't handle the crying. So we find out that Fred was actually the one to suffocate the baby. And Morgan's talking through um, tin cans. Trying to get the message back to Grace saying. Don't leave him alone. Don't leave the baby alone with Fred. Don't leave the baby alone with Fred. You see Fred screaming. The baby screaming. Fred screaming. They're all out. He's getting so frustrated. He's like it's going to be easier. It's going to be easier. He's getting ready to suffocate the baby. And then Grace shoots him in the head. Showing that she is there for the baby now we've known that she's been there for the baby through the entire episode but this is something showing us that she is in fact there for the baby morgan and grace then suit up the car and they leave the woman behind the woman wants to be with her husband and child until the end they're both dead but she knows very well she will be dead soon enough and morgan and grace just drive off it's left up to believe that we don't know where they're going but we do find it later in the episode but we first off wondering are they going to continue with their journey or they're just going to head back because even morgan says at one point in the episode we can't turn back we have no petrol it's it's now or never we don't have enough petrol to make this journey twice so it literally is now or never but it does get revealed they did go back to the submarine they put the baby down my first thought was where the hell's the dog because of course they did take the dog with them but i was wondering where the hell did they leave the dog they put the people in the submarine and then all of a sudden some people just emerge from around the submarine in the inside and i was wondering who the hell is this i didn't think i didn't think of it who it was going to be and it's revealed that they're actually part of strand's group uh they immediately talk to morgan morgan doesn't get an invite back but grace in particular does get an invite back they said she's very much of an asset she turns them down morgan says take the baby they say well i take the baby if we take grace grace denies their claim so then course they are stuck there so the three of them are going to be living in the submarine and then they're in the uh, they're going through the storage room to see if they actually if there's much left there they go well they really took everything there's nothing there but they took everything and then you see the baby crawling and it's a sign of hope for them it's a sign of hope for us that even though the world has been destroyed they still have hope in there and as the baby crawls it knocks up a little bit of a mat to reveal a hidden compartment that is full to the brim of food which really leads on to my theory that we're going to see a time skip i really think we're going to be seeing i don't think it'll be in the second half i think it will be in the first half but i know next week is grace and john dory senior so i imagine we're going to be picking up with all our characters right after the right after aftermath of the uh, explosion and then we're going to get a big time skip like grace and morgan said there's a few months supplies here but I imagine that's just in that compartment. I imagine there's loads of other compartments full of food. I imagine Grace and Morgan have enough there to do them for years. So I imagine we are going to see a big time skip at some point in the first half. If not 
episode 9 of the season that is going to bring them up to the Walking Dead and the World Beyond time period because these are only 4 years into the apocalypse, Walking Dead is 10 years so they're going to have to get them up to that at some point so I imagine and it's a prediction I've had since even before the end of season 6 is that we're going to see a massive time skip with them living in these bunkers for so many years and then we're finally going to see them coming out so my prediction is we might not see Morgan and Grace again for a couple of episodes and when we do see them it's going to be years down the road. That kid is going to be 7 or 8 or 6 or 7. Whatever age it's going to be. But I imagine we are going to get a massive time skip moving forward. But we do get one thing at the end. Was my thought when the dog left. I was always thinking. Where the hell's the dog gone? Did they just leave the dog? But no the dog is with someone. And at first I was thinking. Who the hell is this guy? Then we see a box that has Morgan Jones. At first I thought it was Strand walking around with the dog. And then we find the box that Morgan put the guy. The bounty hunter in episode 1 of season 6. He put his head in the box. And it's revealed that I'm pretty sure it's the guy's brother who is now looking for revenge from Morgan for what he did to his brother. So this guy is now out there trying to hunt Morgan down. And I really, I don't know how else how all that's going to play out. I don't think that guy is going to kill Morgan. I imagine Morgan's going to kill him. But it's a cool little interesting story that there is someone out there looking for Morgan. Because all the marketing was kind of advertising Strand's the big bad. But it's also cool to have this guy out here also trying to hunt down Morgan. So it's really cool that Morgan has really pissed off a lot of people. And a lot of people are out there trying to kill Morgan after everything he has been trying to accomplish in Fear the Walking Dead since he moved over. But anyways, that was all my thoughts on episode 2. I do prefer episode 2 over episode 1 mostly because we got to see a lot more of the aftermath of the world. Episode 1, we got to see a bit at the start and then we just got to see Strand's whole place. But I really did like to see them trying to survive in this world. Seeing that some people's faces have been absolutely destroyed because of the radiation. Just really getting to see the aftermath of what Teddy has done. I really enjoyed all of that. And if any of my thoughts on episode 3. Episode 3 from the trailer anyways. Looks very interesting to see picking up with John Dory Sr. and June. Really excited to see what's going to happen with them. But again if you want to hear my thoughts on all those episodes. As well as World Beyond future episodes for them. Click that subscribe button. And as always thanks for watching.